What a change. A very rapid warm-up across the southwestern U.S. You probably remember a couple of weeks ago we had that snow in Arizona. We take the water vapor imagery back to the 26th of December and run it forward to today. And there's that incursion of Pacific air coming into much of the western half of the U.S. and now making some progress into the central states. Let's take a look at that surface map for this afternoon. It was a little bit challenging. On the large scale, we can definitely see the Bear Clinic zone right through here. The thickness contours showing some packing, and that reveals where the frontal transition zone is. But out there in the warm air mass, a series of steps of a transition from warm to cold air. So we've got this first step along the Gulf Coast, not very well organized, but temperatures south of that in the 70s and the dew points up there in the 60s. And then we go to the next step right there, lots of 50s in Texas. This looks like some retreating modified air. And then we find another gradient up there in Missouri, Kansas, and we drop off into the 30s. And then the final step up there in Canada. So I went ahead and carried this as two separate systems. There's that cold front and warm front up north and the other one in the central and southern plains. And I wasn't too sure what to do with that occlusion, so I kind of kept it like that. In the western states, a reinforcing shot of cold polar air coming down through Utah and Nevada. You can see the transition between the southwesterly flow in Vegas and Arizona to northwesterly up to the north. And sometimes on the backside of these systems, we do get a little bit of that bear clinic development. Similar pattern happening up there in Alberta, a little Alberta clipper trying to get organized. And we take a look out there in the Pacific, stormy, lots of warm air advection, a vast field of southerly flow coming up into the Gulf of Alaska. Still quite a bit of polar air covering the interior regions, temperatures in the minus teens to just above zero. And the true polar air, the true Arctic air, the coldest stuff, yeah, that's up there in the Canadian high Arctic, where temperatures are near minus 30. And that brings us back to Canada. And most of the weather is coming from those systems there in the northern and central U.S. But some impressive return flow across much of the eastern and Ohio Mississippi River Valley. Temperatures already up to 40 degrees at Buffalo where they've had to contend with that snow and ice. So that's given them a bit of a gradual warm up. Let's take a look at the upper tropospheric chart, the 300 millibar chart, up at about 30,000 feet. And this shows a zonal flow across much of the U.S. into the Pacific. There's the polar front jet coming from the central Pacific into the California and Arizona region. And then it kind of arcs back up there north of the Great Lakes. There is a little bit of blocking out there in eastern Canada. There's a low pressure area right there. High pressure area up to the north, which is kind of unusual. And... We consider that a, a blocking pattern, and that tends to kind of lock up the flow in that part of the continent. So the main focus for today is going to be that trough in the western U.S., the main bear clinic development zone out there in the Rockies, and on the backside of that trough, subsidence. And that's where we tend to find high pressure and anticyclogenesis. But more energy well out there in the Pacific. That's going to be a 180 knot jet. So we're not quite done with the weather. And as that comes inland, weather going downhill once again in California, Arizona, we break off a trough for Saturday. And that trough digs on in into the southwestern U.S., a strong southerly jet through Texas, Oklahoma. And that should bring up some moisture as we get into Monday. So that'll be our next big chance of thunderstorms. Looking out there in the Pacific, yet again, more energy, high zonal index, very strong flow, positive EPO, the whole works. And we go into later next week, Thursday and Friday. Not much change. 
series of troughs, series of ridges, and it's kind of a progressive pattern, so these are just going to keep coming on in, one after the other. And we'll drop down to 500 millibars and take a closer look at the U.S. There's that broad trough in the western U.S., the main jet energy up to the north, not so much down in Texas, Arkansas. And as we go forward through the rest of the day, we can see that trough digging. This is the first trough digging into the Four Corners area. This is going to be about midnight, so the weather will be a bit temperamental in the high plains of Colorado and New Mexico. And that trough will lift rapidly up to the north. Looks like by tomorrow evening, already heading up into the Great Lakes. However, height falls and troughiness out there in the southern Rockies. And that'll help support the activity for tomorrow afternoon out there in the southern Mississippi River Valley and East Texas. A little bit of ridging building in back behind that for the weekend. So it'll probably be nice for the first half of the weekend, but as we go into Sunday, there's that next trough digging into California. And that will have an effect for sure in the southern Rockies and Texas. But this very deep trough here will support a strong southerly component. So the wind field, as far as severe weather, will tend to be somewhat unidirectional. And the energy heads rapidly up into the Great Lakes by Tuesday. And we just get one trough, one ridge, one after the other. There's the next one going into California a week from now on Friday, a little over a week. And that energy heads mostly into the Central Rockies. And the final AWIPS chart that we'll look at is precipitable water. And this is important during all seasons. We typically look at this a lot in the summertime, but during the winter, this is definitely helpful for finding those atmospheric rivers, the so-called Pineapple Express. The shading that you see here is precipitable water. The scale up there in inches at the top, and this is basically giving us the distribution of moisture in the vertical through a column at any given point in the U.S. Also on here is the 700 through 1,000 millibar thickness, and of course the sea level pressure, the black lines. So. We start out at uh, the 12Z this morning. Let's bring this up to the current time. That's going to be this evening. Some feeble moisture coming up into Texas. That's going to be about three quarters of an inch precipitable water. The Pacific Front running about like that. And there's that supply of moisture coming into Baja, California. Not much of it making it into the U.S. itself. But overnight, the Warm air advection works its magic in Texas. And as we get into tomorrow afternoon, some one inch precipitable water amounts coming up into Texas. And that's helping to beef up the environment for those developing storms along the tail end of that cold front. And looks like by evening, few inch and a half amounts. So that'll help support those storms as they march eastward. And those head into the southeastern U.S. for Friday into Saturday. Meanwhile, another system working into California. We have to run that back. Things are moving so quickly. Yeah, there it is coming together. You can see the thickness field here supporting that front. That's almost certainly frontogenesis right there near San Francisco. And with that, the higher precipitable waters reflected as well. And that works into the Los Angeles area for Saturday evening. Very easy to pick out that front using this combination of fields. So that's going to be it right there. And of course, that makes its way into the Rockies for Sunday and out into the plains for Monday. And that's when we're going to see at least some severe weather maybe in this area right there. And that moves to the east. California gets another system easy to pick that out once again with this field and that moves into the Rockies and then another system for Wednesday next week. So there is that one and that appears to extend northward as an occlusion and then a little separate system up to the north. However, it looks like the moisture has been depleted quite a bit due to that northerly component late next week into the Great Plains. 
So as this system tries to cross over the Rockies, it reemerges on the other side. You can see the strong pressure falls out there in Colorado, but not much moisture at this point. Looks like a little moisture surge trying to get going. This is going to be January 7th, so this is quite a ways away. But looks like a problematic setup there for severe weather. We'll have to see how that plays out. So looking at the SPC convective outlook, a general area for the high deserts of Arizona. For tomorrow, with that moisture returning into East Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana, a marginal risk. Not looking at much tornado potential with that. Not much information in the discussion about why the severe risk is low, but looks like marginal instability, dynamics being out of place, and just all the parameters probably are shaping up to be rather low. Then we go into the day three outlook. Again, a general risk for the southern Mississippi River Valley, and that's certainly good news because they do tend to get hammered a lot in the cold season. There have definitely been some significant tornadoes in the southeastern U.S. from November through April. And there's a factor they're looking at, the lack of surface cyclogenesis. When that is the case, we tend to get very limited backing of the winds, and that gives us more of a unidirectional profile and limits the shear, especially in the lower one kilometer. So let's put it together and look at the air masses using the 850 millibar temperature anomaly. There's that vast area of warm weather. That's certainly indicative of downslope conditions from the Rockies, and that extends all the way into New York. And a large warm sector in the Pacific, but we're going to watch this cold air coming out of the western ocean basin. So going forward, let's see how things shape up. That warm sector heads up into British Columbia, the Pacific Northwest. And right behind it, there's that cold air. This is cold maritime polar air, the front running about like that. So we're up to Friday here. That cold air moves inland on Saturday. That's going to give us our next weather system there in California. That's it coming together. And another one lined up further out to the west. And take a look up there in the Arctic region. There's not much cold air. In fact, temperatures are a little bit warmer than usual in Alaska and in the Arctic Basin region. Now, this is at 850 millibars. Temperatures could be a little bit different at the surface. That does appear to be the case in this plateau area of the Yukon. And there could be some other cold air lurking in the interior. But overall, this is indicating that any cold air does not have much depth. So if we go into the rest of the weekend, there's that cold air mass making its way into the southwestern U.S. and emerging into Texas. And we can see kind of a complicated structure here. There's one front. This appears to be another surge of cold air. And that could link up to another front there around Elkhart, Kansas. So we're up to Monday evening. And we see a very strong temperature anomaly working through the Great Lakes into Quebec and Ontario. So temperatures should be well above normal around midweek in the northeastern U.S. and the Quebec, Ontario, St. Lawrence River Valley area. Meanwhile, cold air working in the western U.S. That'll support another frontal system right there around Thursday and another wave moving onshore for Friday. So, yeah, a lot of our weather will be coming from the Pacific over the next two weeks. Beyond that, really don't have any idea. You can see some cold air up there in the Arctic around the 12th, but that could be the usual GFS cold bias. So, in the comments, please let me know what you think about these AWIPS charts. They do give us the actual tools that weather service forecasters use. On the other hand, maybe they're too complicated. I don't know. But I do like the way they look, and hopefully we'll be able to use more of these in the weeks ahead. Suggestions and comments, please leave those, and I'll check those over. That's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. We'll see you back here in a couple days. Hope you have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday. Take care. Bye-bye.